In this lecture, we look at the glycolysis pathway, which is one of the major pathways by which glucose is metabolized. The aim of this lecture is to give an overview of the glycolysis pathway so that you can get to grips with the major principles, enough to be able to go on and read about the finer details in textbooks and chapters. This lecture is based on the ebook Get to Grips with Biochemistry, which can be downloaded from the website address on the slide from where you can also download some sample chapters of the ebook for free. Glycolysis literally means splitting glucose. One of the first things discovered about glucose metabolism was that the six carbon structure was split into two three carbon structures, hence the name glycolysis. Glycolysis is sometimes called the abdomen Meyerhoff pathway. And it's one of the ways that energy in the form of ATP is made in cells. We can divide the glycolysis pathway into 10 steps. And in this lecture, we will look at each of these steps individually. It's convenient to examine each step of the pathway under six headings. First, the substrate are substrates that react, that is, the molecules that are acted on by the enzyme. Second, the product are products of the reaction. Third, the enzyme that catalyzes the reaction. Most, but not all, steps are catalyzed by an enzyme. Fourth, any cofactors used by the enzyme. Fifth, factors controlling the activity of the enzyme, if any, especially if the enzyme is a rate-limiting enzyme for the pathway as a whole. And finally, a detailed description of how the step takes place. Each step usually involves a sequence of substeps involving the creation of a chemically unstable intermediate, transfer of a chemical group to be transferred to the enzyme cofactor and then onto the receiving molecule, and so on. In this lecture, we won't look at the details of any of the reactions, but being aware of these details and being able to describe them is one way to earn higher marks in exams. So let's start by reminding ourselves of the structure of glucose. It has six carbons, which in nature forms into a five carbon ring structure with a one carbon side chain, with a characteristic distribution of hydrogen and hydroxyl groups attached to each of the six carbons. This is one chemical structure that you should probably be able to draw. The first step in glycolysis is the conversion of glucose to glucose 6 phosphate. So let's go through each of the steps. The substrates are glucose and ATP. The ATP is the source of the phosphate in the glucose 6 phosphate. Now, it may seem a bit odd that this reaction requires ATP, and one of the primary roles of glycolysis is to make ATP for the cell. We will see later that glycolysis makes more ATP than it uses, but you do have to feed ATP in to get things going, so to speak. The products of the reaction are glucose 6 phosphate with the phosphate attached to the six carbon of the glucose, as the name implies. And the other product is adenosine diphosphate. The enzyme that catalyzes this reaction in muscle is called hexokinase. In the liver, the reaction is catalyzed by a similar enzyme called glucokinase. These enzymes are very similar in their mechanism, but they differ in the way their activity is controlled. The second step in glycolysis is the conversion of glucose 6-phosphate to fructose 6-phosphate. The substrate is glucose 6-phosphate. The product is fructose 6-phosphate. Glucose 6-phosphate and fructose 6-phosphate are isomers of each other. That is to say, they have the same number of each atom. The atoms are just arranged in a different way. So this reaction simply involves breaking some of the chemical bonds and rearranging the atoms. The enzyme that catalyzes this reaction is an isomerase, and we won't say any more about it here. The third step in glycolysis is the conversion of fructose 6-phosphate to fructose 1,6-bisphosphate by the addition of another phosphate group. So let's go through the steps. The substrates are fructose 6-phosphate and again ATP as the source of the phosphate. 
So this is the second time we're using an ATP molecule in a process that's supposed to be making ATP. The products are fructose 1,6-bisphosphate and adenosine diphosphate, or ADP. The enzyme that catalyzes this reaction is called phosphofructokinase, or PFK. This is probably the most important enzyme in glycolysis, as it is the rate-limiting enzyme. By that we mean that the whole of glycolysis can only proceed as fast as this enzyme catalyzes its reaction. It kind of acts like a toll booth on a toll road. Various factors can control the activity of this enzyme and so control the overall rate of glycolysis. One of the factors that inhibits the activity of PFK is high levels of ATP. This makes sense because if there's lots of ATP around, you do not need an active glycolytic pathway making more. This is a form of what's known as feedback inhibition, where the ultimate product of the pathway feeds back to inhibit an earlier step. And it is an important concept that you will come across in biochemistry over and over again. If you choose only one enzyme in the glycolytic pathway to know about, this is the one. The fourth step is the splitting of the six carbon substrate fructose 1,6-bisphosphate into two products each of which have three carbons, dihydroxyacetone phosphate and glyceraldehyde 3-phosphate. The enzyme that catalyzes this reaction is called aldolase. Note that the two three-carbon products of this reaction are isomers of each other, a concept we came across in an earlier slide. And so they can be interconverted one to the other catalyzed by the enzyme triose phosphate isomerase. So here's a summary of the important steps in the first part of glycolysis. Remember, free chapters of the ebook Get to Grips with Biochemistry, covering energy metabolism, carbohydrates and lipids, in 50 short chapters, can be downloaded from the website address on the slides.